Welcome to week six. This week we're covering in chapter 11 how to use jQuery UI interactions and effects. Now, from previous weeks, we've been talking about just about anything covering uh, widgets, uh, the user interface, um, a lot of other uh, coding applications that sort of in a step-by-step -step fashion lead us up to the ability to use interactions and effects. And these are primarily used in websites to make ease of use and sort of time-saving uh, methods to keep the user interested and to keep the user on the site. One of the things that we both probably know, if not through ourselves, is when we're on a website, we're pretty much focused on trying to find exactly what we need and move on. And that's really one of the biggest pluses about using jQuery, whether it's uh, a widget, uh, an effect, or an interaction, is the ability to use less code to make it effective, but also to make it uh, as interactive as possible to the user so it's not complex or difficult or in any way distracting to the user where they inevitably leave your site. So one of the things uh, that's another plus for jQuery is the, the coding methods and the overall um, ways that we can use interaction and effects on our websites. Some of these uh, objectives that we're covering through chapter 11 will include the use of drag and drop, which I think all of us are pretty familiar with, uh, able to resize stuff, select stuff, and sort stuff. And I think the sort um, method is something I would note for this week because I believe it's the exercise um, assignment um, that is required uh, in week six. We'll also cover some of the effects including transitions, color, class, and visibility. Some of these will sound, if not look, familiar to our use of um, stuff in PowerPoint. I think I mentioned this last week, is some of the interactions and effects that you can use um, in PowerPoint in the way that you go from slide to slide, or to make the slide more uh, interactive or appealing, is somewhat similar uh, to the stuff that we can use with jQuery. Resizing here is uh, an interaction uh, element that um, is probably more common than you think. If you've taken other HTML classes, the ability to shape something, uh, if not have it done automatically, is also very appealing, particularly when you're talking about mobile devices, um, tablets, uh, smartphones. They use, uh, in some cases, mobile versions, and sometimes having that ability to have a image or a figure or just the overall um, area of some code or some some image or something that needs to be seen needs to be resized appropriately so that the user can actually see it on the screen without having to, to reshape it um, continuously or manually. The HTML code that supports that um, resize element that we just saw the preview of is seen here. Notice the div ID uses a widget header for the resize element. Next, we have the jQuery interaction code that gives us the min and max of height and width to be able to resize. So some of the uh, UI interactions, uh, you've probably seen these, if not read about them already in the chapter. Um, drag and drop is something I think we're all familiar with because that's one of those common things that we do using a GUI, whether it's been uh, prevalent in Windows and eventually Linux. The ability to move files or move data or move information in a drag and drop fashion uh, is even also incorporated into, I think, Google Docs and Google Sheets and some of the other elements of us being able to use our Google Drive, SkyDrive, and so on. So that element uh, is also possible using jQuery uh, UI. Again, we've already covered the resize element, but we also have selectable and sortable. And remember that sort, uh, there's a sort function we're going to be using in our exercise for the week six assignment. So one of the elements you can see here, um, whether it's on an e-commerce business or a consumer website, the ability to move something in and out of a cart. This to me looks like something right out of DreamSpark to be able to add something and move uh, some software or something that I'm willing to order. And the jQuery code allows this to, to work to our favor. This is the preview of what it looks like to be able to add something that's not in your cart uh, or take something in your cart and move it out. It works both ways. For the HTML code, 
supports the drag and drop elements. Note the div IDs with respect to the prospect, the convert, and the retain of those elements in the card. Following will be the jQuery code. Seen here, the jQuery code gives us the drag and drop interaction using starting with the ready function, and then we have the prospect convert and retain uh, the draggable using the cursor move, and then the dropple uh, function with the event UI. Note that we're using that hierarchy again uh, of children. So if one, uh, it's hard to imagine doing a drag without a drop, you know, and vice versa. So these are, are linked and it's hard to see them not be. So in terms of text, we have a resize method here and you can see these on many websites that have like a Q and A or a comments field or a questions for us or a contact us field where there is a box that can be reshaped uh, to add some information that you want to put in there. Now, so in the past, I've noticed that some of these boxes have basically a character limit, which means sometimes you can put in 256 characters or 256 or even higher, but there is a limit. With the resizing, it gives you the ability to shape it in such a way that makes it uh, easier to use and more functional for you. The coding for that question and comments box is seen here. Pretty standard, pretty easy stuff. Nothing too complex for HTML. Next is the jQuery for the resizable interaction here. I forget the questions resizable handle. And we done handles uh, several weeks ago. Follow on is CSS. Seen here, the resizable interaction CSS is noting the bottom and right values for the resizable UI. So previously we looked at a single selected element uh, as an example of moving something in a cart or out of the cart uh, in terms of what's being retained of a certain product or something. Here we have two selectable elements. And you've probably done this before um, shopping on Amazon or eBay or, or whatever site you use to add something. The ability to move not just one element uh, into or out of a cart, but two elements. And this preview shows that we have two selected. And here's the HTML code that allows both of those to be interactively selected to be moved. Note again that we're using the prospect, convert, and retain jQuery interaction for that. Seen here, using the selectable function that selects that information. Note that it is the UI selected with each function and then it appends it since we're adding not just one, but two. So we're connecting those. There's gonna be a relationship. CSS gives us some background structure for the color that we need. A sortable list here is probably something you've seen if not on um, like a multiple choice test uh, or some uh, element where you get to reorder something specifically. If you've ever taken a survey where it says list and order a priority from favorable to unfavorable, how you like a certain, certain product or a certain method of something that's important to you. And of course you can move these around. That's what the sortable list is really about and that's what jQuery provides us here. We can actually move these around as a sort function. So you've probably done this in the past and not even know it. Um, and jQuery makes it easier uh, for us to do this interactively on a website. The HTML code that supports that, you just saw from the preview of the sortable list is seen here. The jQuery for the sortable function noted here. And of course, uh, we have to use a placeholder for the, the highlight UI because every time you are selecting something, it is highlighted in order for it to be moved up or down. Here's the CSS giving us some specifications on the height of that highlight. So jQuery core effects include class transitions, color transitions, easing, and visibility. We are, um, you can refer to some of these, I've covered this um, the easing part uh, with examples noted in the uh, lecture for this week. So you'll see this um, in terms of the type of effects, and this is what I was um, mentioning earlier about the type of transitional effects that you would normally associate with something like PowerPoint slides. Note that some of these are uh, shake, size, slide, transfer, pulsate, fade, fold, highlight, um, bounce, that kind of thing. And these are elements that are possible in PowerPoint. So the effects that we're talking about here in jQuery are not all that different from ones that we have probably done in the past in PowerPoint. If you go to the jQueryUI.com easing, you can see some of these elements that we're covering. And I think I noted that in the lecture notes as well. The specific syntax for an effect is seen here. 
It's got the same format as like a function, but it gives us the specifics that include the options, duration, and callback listed within parentheses. Sort of a list that uses the highlight as well as pulsate function. Remember the last one we saw was basically just a sort of a list with highlight only. Here we're adding pulsate to that effect. Now, I don't know that that's really required, but maybe for interactive or maybe something appealing to the user, I don't know. It's something you would have to sort of try and see how appealing it is and maybe I don't expect one to be really that much better than the other. I think the highlight is enough, but others might um, might delay, might use different effects to appeal to the user when it's uh, being highlighted and moved. A sort of a list for the HTML that we just saw, not all that different from the original one. A jQuery effect seen here, for that sort of a one. And note that it's got the, uh, the highlight uh, function already there that was similar to the one we had previously, but here we have the pulsate that's added, and it pulsates, we can note, three times as its effect listed and detailed in that particular function. So what this means essentially is that once it's selected, it's highlighted, and then it pulsates three times. A text area that can grow and change color when a, a length is clicked. Now you've seen this part where you look at the increased text area. Uh, you can tell uh, it's not blue anymore, so it has that sort of purple uh, view, which means it's already been selected. And that color change is just basically a reminder to you, the user, um, that you've already selected it before. It's been previously selected. HTML coding to support that box. Notice the width and the height of that particular area. And then I add the ability for that area to be increased for text. jQuery that supports that gives us some of the dimensions that we would normally also associate with CSS parameters with height, background color, and so on. Properties that would be included in that to make it more animated are seen here. Again, these are similar things that uh, we would normally associate with CSS coding. Background color, border color, left, right, top, and others. Syntax of the methods uh, for, for transitions include the add class, remove class, toggle, and switch. Um, this is pretty st standard stuff that is covered well in chapter 11, uh, and there's not a whole lot that's different for the way transitions have been previously used. Here we have a before and after of text that has been changed. Uh, the default, uh, the original one is at the top left, and the one that has been altered and resized to be large, as you can see there, is the bottom right. And it is bigger. It's almost as if you're basically increasing the box, therefore increasing the text size, which is what you're seeing there. The HTML coding that supports all of those is seen here, giving you the button uh, options that you noticed in that preview of medium, large, and extra large. And then the jQuery that supports those class functions uh, for transitions right here. And note that at the bottom, you have that function for the size of either removing the class or add class of a certain size. CSS that supports all of those medium, large, and extra large buttons. And for visibility transitions, we have the show, hide, and toggle effect. And those can be seen here, like this. And again, if you see the ones that have the about us or contact us or something, these are sites that are pretty much universal across whether it's a a hosted website or an organizational website, a business or a nonprofit or something, you see a lot of these near the bottom. In some cases, the left nav bar or the right nav bar, you'll see these types of buttons right here in this visibility transition uh, has been slowly moving using jQuery code that you see here because it's just much easier for coding in terms of ease of use as well as time saving. HTML that supports that, which we just saw, is right here. Note again that they have the prospect convert and retain for those links. And then the jQuery code that supports that as well. Notice that it does have a toggle using the blind parameter. And here we have the create of a drag and drop list. Again, these are similar to something you would say uh, you'd be doing in a survey uh, of what belongs in here. I've seen these in also training exercises where you have to move these in the right order or put them in the right list and then have them submitted so that you can find out whether you got all of them right or incorrect. Also, you know, something you would see on maybe like a certification test. 
whether it be office or other IT networking security uh, certification tests, these types of elements allowed the test taker to move these in the right order in order to get the answer correct and then move on to the next one. And jQuery supports this. You've probably seen these images. Um, the jQuery one, this, all of these Mark books uh, are pretty much the same color uh, with the heading like this, but of course we're using the jQuery one. And if you go to, to Murak's website, you'll see all of these listed there. But these are the effects. If you note that the selected one is Dreamweaver, it gives you a larger image, plus a basic description to the right, while the others in the background uh, are smaller and waiting to be selected. A selectable to-do list, something we've probably all done at one time or another, if, if not on our own computer, on a website of selecting something in order to add or delete I think we've probably done this uh, using Office or Outlook uh, in terms of adding tasks or deleting tasks or editing them, putting them in a different order, kind of like a chore list, to-do list. Okay, so we've covered pretty much everything in terms of selectable, sortable, drag and drop, uh, transitions and effects for the week. Um, I have added two links um, that are of YouTube videos that basically supplement a lot of these slides that you saw here as well as the lecture notes. Um, some are basically 10 minutes long. Uh, there might be one that's um, a little shorter, but they cover essentially the same material, but they, I, want, I like adding YouTube videos because they, they cover it also from a different angle. And some of these folks out there um, are very uh, attuned to trying to give examples uh, to you and I in such a way that uh, it gives you a different viewpoint of how something can be useful. And I think that type of supplement can be an added benefit here uh, in a jQuery class. So let me know if you have any questions. Have a good week. Talk to you soon.